Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? With the quality of headphones and speakers and amps that we have available today, our music has never sounded better. But does the way we listen to music undermine all that technology? This is actually a video that I've kind of been struggling to shoot. It's a topic that's pretty important to me because of how big of a role music plays in my life. And I've, I've shot this particular podcast probably two or three times and ultimately never published them because I never liked the way it worked out. I think it ended up becoming too much of a ramble. I tried to, to cover too much in one episode. So this one, I'm gonna really narrow down to a very specific topic, and it's this comparison between the quality of equipment we have versus our own usage of that equipment, our own habits to listening to music. And I should also, to kind of help you get in my head a little bit, answer a question that I actually get asked pretty frequently. Um, especially after I upload a new video that maybe does a review of headphones or Bluetooth speaker or some audio equipment. And that is, am I an audiophile? I don't really consider myself an audiophile in the strict sense of spending, you know, all my, my free time and, and spare money on trying to build this massive and expensive, you know, home rig. To, to chase this dream of, you know, so-called perfect audio reproduction. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not into that. I completely believe in trying to find the best bang for your buck um, and not necessarily trying to chase diminishing returns, which you will start heading down that path very quickly if you start following the audiophile circle, circles. I'm, I'm more about can I get music to sound the way I want it to sound without a massive investment? Which is why I really like looking at like $100 to $200 headphones. They're not the cheapest things you can get, but they're not pushing that, that boundary of, are you really getting more even though you're dropping a significantly larger amount of money, I guess is a way to put it. So I'm, I'm all about bang for buck. So that said, over the years, of course, technology is going to continually improve. And one way that it's really improved is audio reproduction equipment. Uh, headphones that we have available today sound dramatically better than headphones from 20 years ago. Speakers we have today can sound dramatically better than speakers we had 20 or more years ago. Part of that is due to better materials, and part of that is simply due to better science, better design. We've got computer aids to help us build this equipment in a more precise way and reduce resonance and reverberation and noise and all these other things that can happen when you're designing any kind of audio equipment. The other thing that we've also really seen is a, another, I should say another, rise in the popularity of personal audio. We saw this originally back in the very late 70s, early 80s, and that was all thanks to Sony with the Walkman. Um, transistor radios ha, you know, existed prior to the Walkman, but they just weren't as common of a thing, really. Um, you know, it, it, it didn't usher in this era of, I want to listen to whatever I want to listen to and shut out the world like the Walkman did. And the Walkman actually really kind of dovetailed from a psychological and sociological perspective with what the rest of the 80s turned out to be. The whole me generation and all that. And I don't want to get into too much of that because you probably don't care. But the Walkman really ushered in personal audio and the iPod brought it back again. The iPod was really just a reincarnation of the Walkman, but for a more modern era, more modern medium. And now we're really seeing it yet again with 
the convenience of smartphone, right? You don't need to carry a separate music player around anymore. You've got it on your smartphone. And what's more, with the advent of music in the cloud and streaming and all that, you can have any music you want to listen to available right on your phone. And it doesn't even need to be stored on your phone. Just any music you want to listen to, you can find it, you can play it on the spot. It's instant gratification. So with that, we've seen a major rise in sales and usage of personal audio. The biggest market to get impacted by this is headphones. I've done a number of headphone reviews. I like headphones. I think headphones, in terms of audio reproduction, are the best bang for buck. I think you can get, let me put it this way, a $200 pair of headphones, I think, will sound better than a $200 pair of speakers. Not counting the fact that you're gonna need an amp for those $200 pair of speakers, that's gonna cost even more. You know, it's gonna push you over that $200 mark. But headphones, I think, are the best bang for buck. And we've seen, sales of headphones just skyrocket, absolutely skyrocket. And they're, they're taking off again with the iPhone 7 and the lack of the headphone jack and all that. I've talked about that topic before. Um, so now Bluetooth, wireless headphones are gonna be a big thing and they're, you know, they're gonna sell those gangbusters, especially as the rest of the smartphone market starts to just pull the headphone jack out of their products too. So headphones really taken off. The other thing that's been a huge market are Bluetooth speakers, these little portable Bluetooth speakers. Um, they, they are incredibly convenient. They're self-contained. You don't have a pile of wires hanging out all over the place. They don't have to be you know, permanently fixed in one place like a, a traditional kind of stereo system might. Um, they are the new boombox, but Again, because of the advancement of technology, these Bluetooth speakers often sound better than a boombox ever did at the same price point. So we've got just all these wonderful and amazing ways to listen to music from like a reproduction point of view that just sounds better than it ever did. The other half of that is of course the medium that we listen to it with. And you would think that we would have these wonderful and amazing new forms of media that the audio can live within, right? We, we progressed through hardware over the years. Started with vinyl records and then tape, and then we went to optical media with compact disc. And then the MP3 era took over. And don't get me wrong, MP3s are actually pretty amazing for what they are in terms of the quality of sound you can get for the small amount of space they take up. But MP3s, really kicked off this new era where it's, it, it wasn't necessarily the next step, right? The, the whole premise all along has been tape sounded better than vinyl. CDs sounded better than tape. So logically, MP3s, digital audio, is supposed to sound better than CDs, yet MP3s to a lot of people, not everybody, but to a lot of people don't necessarily sound any better. They sound the same. And to a small number of people, they actually sound worse. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and claim to be somebody with golden hearing, and I can tell the difference between all the different bit rates and, and between CD and all that in a blindfold test. I, I, my hearing isn't that great, but I can tell you that I can hear a difference between a lower bitrate MP3 and a high bitrate one. And while high bitrate MP3s do sound really good, they still lack a little bit of something that the original audio has. So when MP3s and by extension other compressed audio formats, AAC is another one, and AAC I think does a better job at compressing audio than MP3, but it, it really became this trade-off now where it's not so much an advancement in the actual technology as it is an improvement in convenience, right? You don't have to go to a store and buy a CD and have that thing physically with you in order to, to get that music. Now you can buy it online and download it and store it on your hard drive. And of course, 
now, you know, as, as we've really started to enter this area, you don't even need to buy it directly. You don't even need to store it directly. It's just out in the cloud and it just streams to you on demand. And that dovetails really nicely with the resurgence of personal audio, you know, with people when they're out and about, they want to listen to, to music. You know, they, you see people walking around all the time out on the street, walking through the store, or through the mall, wherever, wearing headphones. You know, 10 years ago, you didn't see that quite so much. I mean, th those people existed, but they were considered kind of weird, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Now it's whatever normal. You see people wearing headphones all the time. And what I can't decide is it seems like it's kind of a chicken and egg type of deal where I don't know if it's the convenience of the music that drove headphone adoption or if it's the the advancement in headphones and maybe some sort of mentality change that has driven adoption in more convenient music platforms like cloud music. But another thing that's a little disturbing is okay so yeah you know compressed music sounds really pretty good compared to cds and we've got some fringe markets where you can buy high resolution you know non-lossless non-lossy compressed i should say audio like hdtracks.com you know so if you want to get your audio file on you can but the vast majority of music i think has actually been recorded in a worse way than older music. And it really all comes down to dynamic range. It's not so much about the actual digital compression of the file that you've taken, you know, this uncompressed audio file and squashed it into an MP3 or an AAC. You lose some quality doing that. But there's another form of compression and it's called dynamic range compression. And it's actually very common, and I even use it myself on these videos. Um, dynamic range is really, in a simplest term, the difference between the quietest parts of audio and the loudest parts of audio. The, the greater the difference there means you've got the, the larger the, the dynamic range. And dynamic range, at least to me, is what adds some life to music. It adds some punchiness, some energy, um, some emotion sometimes. It's, it's necessary to have a decent dynamic range for a really engaging experience. But what we've been seeing in modern music, stuff probably recorded starting maybe the last 20 years, maybe a little bit before that, is this music has been recorded and, and mixed and mastered in such a way where that dynamic range has been shrunk. Where the quieter parts of a song aren't really that much quieter than the loudest parts of a song. Now there's a real reason for doing this. And it's actually due to economics and the business of the music industry. And it's really all about radio, and casual playback in places like stores. When you've got a whole bunch of songs on rotation, like the, you know, the top 40, you want your song to be the most recognizable, the, the one that people remember the most, the one that people pay the most attention to. And people generally are going to remember and pay attention to music that's louder than other music. It's just, it's this thing that we've got in our brains where louder music generally can sound better, but it also attracts your attention more. And it doesn't necessarily need to be like loud, loud. It just needs to be more prominent. And that's what compressing the dynamic range does. It makes the, the song overall seem louder than it may actually be otherwise. Of course, doing so sucks the life out of the music to a lot of people, including myself. A great comparison that I like to use is listen to any top 40 song and then play an older album, 
a great example, one that I love to just rock out to in the, in the guitar, is ACDC's Back in Black. That was an album recorded back in the analog days when everything was recorded to tape and they didn't have the same level of editing that we do now where everything is just recorded to the hard drive of a computer and all the mixing is done in a computer everything is just done completely digitally back then they did they had to do everything the hard way and it was recorded to tape and it was mixed in the analog realm and any effects were added in the analog realm so they didn't want to do too much to it because every time they made a change it would decrease the sound quality and compression technology wasn't very good back then either. So they couldn't really compress the hell out of it. And of course they didn't have the ubiquitous, you know, source of music that we do now where you go anywhere and you can hear music playing. You know, you, they play music in the movie theater before the movie starts. They play it at the mall, they play it at stores. Um, you know, they play it at sporting events and, and all these other places. Music is just surrounding us. Back then, it wasn't quite as ubiquitous. Music was more of a thing that you had to seek out to purposefully enjoy, whereas, unfortunately, now, music seems more and more just like background noise. People put it on to drown out the rest of the world, and they aren't necessarily making a concerted effort to listen to it. But older music generally is gonna sound better than modern music because they didn't have the same listening environment and the same business requirements or business desires that the record companies have today. And I think that's a real shame that we've got equipment that can reproduce music way better with way better fidelity than music from the early 80s or the equipment from the early 80s ever could. Not to say that there was bad equipment back then, but the same level of music playback wasn't, it, it was much more expensive back then than it is now. You spend a lot less money now to get better quality audio than you had to 20, 30 years ago. And I just think it's kind of a shame that this, the, the they call it the loudness wars, has, has really kind of taken hold where it's an exception to have a modern album actually sound really good. The last one that I can think of is Random Access Memories by Daft Punk. You know, that's, that's the most recent you know, album I can think of that actually sounds really good, that has dynamic range to it, that has detail to it, that isn't just brick-walled all to hell, where everything is just try and get it up to the top you know, of, of the view meter as possible and keep it there. Not to say that dynamic range compression doesn't have its merits, I'm using it right now, so that if I get excited about something and start talking louder, it doesn't blow your eardrums out. It's, it's, it's a necessary thing. But in music, it, you know, within, within certain parameters, you want some dynamic range, I guess is what I'm getting at. So. I think we've seen a major shift in the way people listen to music, and that signaled a major shift in the way that music has been produced. And it's really, I think it's really kind of unfortunate because it's just wasting the level of technology that we have available to us. You know, we, with the amount of, of storage and how cheap digital storage is and the amount of bandwidth we have and everything, we could be listening to really high quality, uncompressed digital music. But we don't because of convenience and, and other life factors. And you know, maybe in the future that'll change. Maybe in the future music won't be so much background noise anymore and people will actually you know, go to an effort to listen to music. They'll set aside time in their day. You know, I'm gonna sit down on the couch and I'm gonna put an album on and I'm just gonna listen to it and enjoy it. Instead of, well, I'm gonna put my headphones in and play some music while I get some other stuff done. That's really the difference from back then to now. So I'm always curious as to your thoughts. Uh, what do you think about all this? Do you care? I mean, does music sound good enough to you? Do you like the level of convenience and are willing to deal with the compromises? 
or are you more into that kind of old school approach where you want the best quality you can get and you're going to just sit and take your time to listen to the music to enjoy it for what it is. Also, I'm always soliciting feedback and suggestions for future topics. If you want to leave those down in the comments as well, I would appreciate it. If you like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.